but hi everybody so I, I'm Dr Serena Tomlinson I'm one of the admissions tutors for the, the Tizard Centre um, and I focus primarily on the applied behaviour analysis, positive behaviour support and forensic issue courses in, in my admissions role so if you've applied for one of those courses it'd be my name that you <laughs> that you see along the way. Um, I'm uh, obviously, as I said, a lecturer at the, the centre, I have a, an interest in supporting family carers of children who display um, behaviours that we might describe it as challenging. So that's a little bit about me. Vivi, did you want to introduce yourself as well? Yes, yeah, that would be great. Hi everyone, I am uh, Dr. Paraskevi Trianda Pilipulu, uh, and I am a senior lecturer in intellectual and developmental disabilities. I'm uh, also the director of studies for the um, autism programs and uh, the IDD programs, the intellectual and developmental disabilities programs. So I also do a lot of research and uh, I'm also doing the admissions uh, this year. So I'll be talking to you about those specific uh, programs. Back to you, Serena, to uh, start us off. Thanks, Vivi. And as you probably guessed, we're doing a bit of a double take <laughs> today, so we'll, we'll keep jumping in and out. Um, OK, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, if you can't see it, do, do give me a shout, but I will share it now. Hopefully that should be fine. Uh, OK, so, so we've just got some slides to run through and, and the, the general format is that we will run through the slides up until the, the end of the section focusing on the intellectual developmental disabilities, autism studies and forensic issue courses. We'll then pause for a Q&A for those courses and then we'll go back into the slides for the section on the applied behaviour analysis and positive behaviour support courses and again we'll pause at the end for Q&A relating to those courses and like I said me and Vivi will do a, a bit of a, a kind of double team and jump in and out as needed. Okay so we are the Tizard Centre, as you know, so we're going to give you a bit of an introduction about the Tizard Centre and who we are and what we do. Then we'll give you an overview of the courses just generally. Um, so all the courses that we run before we kind of focus in on, on those two course groups that I mentioned before. And like I say, we'll stop after each of those sections for a QA. and a um, OK, so the Tizard Centre, this is um, where we are located on campus. So <laughs> it's not um, as distinctive as it might be, but if you need to know, you'll obviously learn as you come. Um, and we are part of the University of Kent, as you may have gathered. We sit within the Division of Law, Society and Social Justice at the University. And within that, we are part of the School of Social Policy, Sociology and Social Research. So we're sort of nestled in there. We have around 15 academic staff, the majority of whom have professional backgrounds. So we've got um, speech and language therapists, clinical psychologists, behavior analysts, lots of people who have kind of come from practitioner backgrounds into academia and some who, are, um, who have kind of come through the, the academic route as well. We do lots of research, as Vivi mentioned, so we normally have um, a fair few research assistants supporting us with that as well. And of course, we have our postgraduate and our PhD students as well. So we were founded or the centre was founded in the 1980s by Jim Mansell um, and others who were around at the time. And since um, we were founded, we've developed a, a national and international reputation of excellence in the field of intellectual and developmental disabilities. So, so we're known quite widely, both nationally and internationally. In the UK, we're one of only a small number of academic groups that specialise in learning disabilities and autism. So we're, we're quite unique in that regard. Our focus is um, quite broad, really. So children, young people and adults with intellectual or developmental disabilities and, of course, those who are autistic as well. We work across the whole sort of service system, if you like, that, that might be involved in supporting that group of individuals. So we, we provide support and do research and consultancy in healthcare settings, psychology based settings, social care, education and so on really we, we don't kind of limit ourselves um, to to particular areas but that's where our work tends to fall at the moment and then the topics that we we tend to focus on that that this kind of changes um at, dependent on you know the research we've got going on at the, at the time but at the moment we've got sort of three main areas of focus so working with individuals who display behaviors a challenge who have mental health difficulties or offending behavior we do quite a lot of work, um, particularly Vivi and others in physical health, 
work related to relationships and inclusion, education and service support settings. But we also do um, research and consultancy and support with those who support individuals with IDD. And so that might be family carers, staff um, or the, the service context itself. And we also do quite a lot of research and work around how to develop services in, an, in the optimal way to, to make sure they're maximizing people's quality of life and, and supporting people appropriately. Um, and similarly working with broader organizations and, and trying to change service, service cultures as well. And as I said, we've got a lot of um, practitioners in, as part of our kind of core academic team. And so as a result, our work has a real applied focus at lots of the work we do is aiming to change practice for the better or to change support for the better for, for individuals. OK, I'm going to hand over to Vivi to, to go through the next couple of slides. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Serena. So uh, what? So just wanted to kind of give you an overview of what we do. So we do a lot of teaching and that's why you're here today. Uh, we've got quite a few uh, postgraduate students. Uh, I think that it's the, one of the most successful master's programs that we, we have within the, the university, uh, basically. So we have um, the postgraduate uh, courses. We have some tester sessions, but also we do quite a lot of uh, training courses. So like, I'm thinking of the new Future Learn uh, program that we've got around autism and understanding autism, but also we are doing a lot of bespoke training. And uh, moving on, uh, and that, that uh, comes in, into our consultancy as well. So we do do a lot of consultancy around autism, uh, autism diagnosis, active support, uh, positive behaviour support, uh, we do do a lot of training, as I said before, bespoke training uh, for staff members, for schools, uh, and a lot of court work uh, for, the, for the individuals that are uh, interested in our forensic uh, programme. So a lot of consultancy and that, through that teaching and that consultancy, um, we do a lot of policy development and uh, we are involved in a lot of uh, the calls for evidence, so the government and other organizations they're calling out for evidence of what is happening currently and uh, we are able also a lot of times to contribute to the nice guidelines uh, so and all of that wouldn't be possible basically without research so we do all do we all we all the members of staff do research uh, as a master's student, uh, you, you will be required to do research, uh, but we also have the TSAT Learning Disability Review Journal, where, uh, we, where you know, we, we are using uh, to uh, publish a, a lot of work. We do have a lot of uh, research uh, seminars, so if you're not on our, uh, on our list, uh, on our newsletter list, uh, where we are sending out information for that, please do. Uh, please do come along and uh, a lot of journal clubs where we are uh, pulling pulling all the research together from not just from the TSAT Centre but from other institutions but all of these things together uh, they they make us who we are basically. So um, as Serena said earlier on we are quite uh, very quite, quite well known uh, nationally but also internationally in 2013 uh, we did get uh, the Queen's Anniversary Award for uh, Higher Education. This is Professor Peter McGill uh, getting, um, getting the, uh, the award. So we are very highly ranked for social policy in the league tables and in the research benchmarks. Uh, there's uh, things, uh, academic things, it's called uh, the REF, so the Research Excellence Framework, where we have excelled. So all the research that we're doing uh, it's it's very impactful. Basically, this is what it says. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you now about the actual studies and what you're uh, what you're here to talk about. And uh, and I'm just this is the overview. This is the overview of what we offer. And um, so we have the masters in autism studies. And as you can see that the majority of what we are offering is not only on a master's level, it goes down to a certificate and a diploma level as well. 
So, for example, we've got the Masters in Autism Studies, and uh, if someone wouldn't want to do the whole Masters, uh, which is 180 credits, they could they could always join us for the postgraduate diploma, which is 120 credits, so it's a bit shorter, uh, or for the postgraduate certificate, which is also only 60 credits. And majority of those um, programs that we do have, we offer them uh, distance learning or campus based, and we also have them as uh, full time or part time. And we're going to be talking about individually about every single one of them. So just as an overview, we've got uh, the autism studies programs. We've got programs in intellectual and developmental disabilities. Then we have the um, programs in analysis and intervention in intellectual and developmental disabilities. And this is the only program that is actually offering a placement. So actually two placements. Um, the new uh, the new program that we're very proud of, and it's starting off uh, this September. It's the forensic uh, in IDD. And uh, Serena, we I'm I'm going to let you talk about those two because they're they're your babies. <laughs> Thanks, Rumi. Um, yeah, so we also have the MSc in applied behavior analysis and the MSc in positive behavior support. Um, I'll talk about these in a lot more detail a bit a bit later, but at the moment, both of those are, are campus based only, although you'll see that we are um, undergoing some course changes and similar to the other programs at the centre that you have the certificate option or the diploma option for those as well. Um, and as Vivi said, the, the only course that has placements is the analysis and intervention in IDD course, so there's no placements for the ABA or PBS courses. I'll hand back to you, Vivi. Lovely, thank you. Um, so a lot of new developments and new stuff, but Serena, you're going to talk about that uh, that bit later on. So uh, just moving on, um, we wanted to kind of talk to you about the entry requirements and what that means in general. So we would like you to have a research university degree, which is um, a 2-2 two -two or above, uh, uh, which is from the UK or equivalent. It doesn't, you, doesn't need to be from the UK. Um, however, if you do not have a degree, don't, uh, that's not the end of the world. Uh, we have a lot of people that they have been working in the sector for years and years, and we wouldn't want to stop them from getting qualifications. So you would need to provide evidence of your ability to complete a postgraduate diploma. And, and there are ways that we go around about this. So we have a task and an interview that you would need to pass in order to be, uh, you know, in order to be admitted into the program. Um, international applicants, uh, they would need to have UK experience if possible. This is not always the case. Uh, so, so if someone is coming from abroad and they do have experience in their country, that would be okay. They wouldn't need to have UK specific experience. Uh, it would be good, but it's not, again, it's, it's not a, a must-on requirement. What it is a must-on, a must requirement is the English language. So for European international students, we require an ILTS uh, test uh, seven uh, with a minimum of 6.5 in any element. Uh, or an equivalent, so it doesn't have to be an IELTS, it could be TOEFL, it could be other uh, other um, CELT as well, so other other uh, tests that, that they check your language, the English language. So as I said before, if you do have, um, if, if it might be that depending on your application, you might be asked to, uh, to do a task with us before, before we give you a place, and we might ask you to come in for an interview. Um, so here's the, uh, the emails uh, that you can, you can actually email uh, studylssj at kent.ac.uk. I think uh, that's the best one really to, uh, to go for. And uh, moving on, um, I wanted to talk to you a bit about the teaching patterns because we're not like uh, any other course. So in, a, in a, other courses and other programmes, you, um, you might know that people are required to come in on a weekly basis, but this is not uh, what we're doing here. 
So the programs are divided into modules and the teaching is all clustered in a monthly four day workshop weeks. So what we do is, is really good for people that they might be working at the same time or they might have other family requirements. We do get a lot of people that they might be parents of autistic individuals or they might, uh, they, you know, they might um, have children with an intellectual disability or they might be working within the sector. So that is perfect, really, for them because everything is clustered within uh, within those four day workshops. So the workshops within those workshops, we do all the teaching and everything. Um, for the IDD and autism program, it's all it's all recorded as well, so you can revisit it. Serena, is that the same for the ABA PBS? Yes, it is. Yeah, so they're all they're all recorded. The, the difference with ABA PBS is that, that as there's no distance learning option, the recordings are more about be, being able to revisit it if you need to, rather than um, that being how you would contact the teaching. Yeah. So so for the IDD and autism. Uh, program um, because we do have the distance learning option it has to be so so this is how people that they they're doing the distance learning uh, option they are um, they're looking at all the all the lectures so um, some of the modules are shared between the TSA programs so some of the modules they're shared between the autism and IDD programs and um, and I think for the ABA and PBS is the same um, and uh, we do, as I said uh, before, we do have distance learning options. Um, we do want you, if possible, to come in the first workshop. And um, it, the, the exam is not a requirement, we hope. So we have managed to uh, persuade university that uh, exams can be taken online. But um, for that first workshop, even though we will be uh, we will be still recording everything. We would like you to come in and um, as as it really enhances your understanding around the modules, around the program, but also you get to know us, we get to know you, you get to know each other and you need someone in that journey, believe me. And um, so, and again, the distance learners, you, you will have access to all the videos of the lectures. Uh, we do have bespoke virtual sessions for you, forum discussions and, um, and materials and guided reading. So no other attendance is required, basically, but we would like you, if possible, to come in that first week. If, if you can't make it, that would not be the end of the world. We can make it work, but, uh, but it would be much better for you if you could. Um, then we also have the placements and the placements, they're only there for the masters, um, the, the MSc in analysis and intervention. So there are two placements there, a service placement and a clinical placement. All the other programs, they do not have a placement. So a bit now about the structure and the assessment uh, pattern. So we do have a lot of uh, quite a lot of coursework that uh, we require from people to do. And uh, that is uh, essays, that is um, case studies that we're using, uh, reports, uh, some posters or some presentations and uh, the dissertation if um, if you're taking the master's option. Um, also, we do have some exams and uh, those exams, majority of them, they are, uh, they are multiple, um, multiple choice questions. And uh, there are some short answer questions as well. And some of them, they're essay based. So, so there's a variety of things that we require. In order to, for someone to progress, um, to progress and to actually get their qualifications, they would need the pass mark is 50%. And they would need to pass all the modules there. Um, so um, this is the this is the masters or the programs really in intellectual and developmental disability. And um, what 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 we what we are looking for in this program is actually giving you everything you need to lead to lead in public services or in policy 
and um, know, know how to read uh, the evidence. So everything that you are suggesting then is evidence-based and uh, it's ethically stringent. So this program is available part-time or full-time and you can either take it as distance learning or campus-based. And as you can see, there's, um, it varies from an MA to a postgraduate certificate. So if you would like to do the MA, that would give you 180 credits and you would have four taught modules, um, which is the research methods module, the service issues, uh, so service issues module, research methods, behavior analysis, and uh, socio-psychology of intellectual and development disabilities. So those four taught modules, they're the same across. Also, you would have an extended essay that is requiring you to pull everything together and a 20,000 word dissertation. So quite a long dissertation there for your, for your masters, but it goes very quickly. Uh, so don't be disheartened by that. Um, then if you decide to do a diploma, uh, so it's the same requirements. However, the dissertation is shorter for the diploma. So it's only 10,000 words. And for the postgraduate certificate, the only difference uh, from the MA is that it doesn't have really a the dissertation element. So that element is missing. Um, now, talking about the analysis and intervention in intellectual and developmental disabilities, and uh, for this master's, this is a campus-based program. So it's not available as distance learning because of, this, of the placement. How can, you, how can you do the placement, really, if you're distance learning? So this has got two placements, a service placement and a clinical, and a clinical placement. And um, in the service placement, what we are doing, we're actually putting you in groups and uh, we, we send you in an organisation, in a service, and you are assessing quality of life in that service, quality of life of, uh, for, for the people that live in there. And looking at how would you be able to intervene? Is this a good service? How would you be able to make things better? How do you assess whether that service is a good one? And in the clinical placement, then you are uh, you are given a, a supervisor, a clinical supervisor. And instead of now going into services uh, and looking at the service as a whole, you are looking at the individual. So in that clinical placement, you have a caseload that you're working with uh, your local uh, clinical supervisor. So this option is available part-time or full-time. If you are taking this full-time, you cannot be working. This is, I, I, I can't stress that enough. It's not physically possible for you to be working. So um, Students uh, then they do assessments. They they learn how to design interventions, how to so how to intervene in the environment, but also so so how to how to intervene, how to train, what is needed basically in order to um, in order to make quality of life better really and and looking at monitoring outcomes. How would you adjust the intervention? And you're looking at all that in an individual level, but also in a service level. Um, so what is this giving you is that experience and expertise and expertise of practice and on conducting research, because you also have your, your research uh, project that you're doing. So the MSc is um, the MSc in analysis and intervention. It has the the four top modules that I talked about, so the research methods, the uh, behavior analysis module, uh, social psychology of intellectual and developmental disabilities and the service issues, also the extended essay, uh, the two placements and the dissertation. Whereas the postgraduate diploma, which is 120 uh, credits, it has all of the above, but with no dissertation. The dissertation here, if you're taking the master's, is 10,000 words. And that's because you also have the placements. So whereas for, for the diploma in the analysis and in, in intervention, there's no dissertation, but their placements are there. 
And, um, oh, sorry, I had already uh, talked to you about this, but yes, so the service placement, it runs first. So if you're a full-time student, it would start, uh, it would start in September when you come in and uh, it would run for the first six months. Um, but if you're a part-time student, then uh, then that service placement, it will run in the first six months of your first year. So we organize everything. We organize the service placements and um, the students, as I said, they work in teams and um, we, we need you to also have DBS and, um, and to, to travel to the placement and the placement is in Kent normally. Now, if it's the, for the clinical placement, it runs from Easter to September, so right around April. And uh, if you're a part-time student, that would run in your second year, again, from April until September. And the students would spend a total of 44 days um, in, in that clinical placement where they will be paired with a clinician. And um, this is where you're going to be allocated the case and work through the case with a clinician. Now, for that clinical placement, we are we are um, we are organising that. So the TSUP Centre is organising that, but we're taking into account where you live. So if it's if so, say for instance, if you live in Brighton and you would like to find a placement near there then we would, we would uh, try and provide a placement and uh, look for a placement, for a clinical placement nearby where you live. So, um, so we, it's desirable for you to drive if you can, uh, but it's not the end of the world. If not, it's just uh, taking lots of buses, if, uh, depending on where the service is. And um, it, I can't stress it enough that it is not possible to work full time and complete these modules. So you would need, uh, if, you, if you're working part-time, you would need to take this master's as a part-time. If you're working full-time, you, there's no way that you can fit it in, basically. Um, and uh, the last one for me is the Autism Studies uh, Master's. And uh, here, this is a program that is available as campus based, but also as distance learning. And you can um, you can take this program uh, full time or part time. Again, it's not advisable that you work full time when you are taking any of, of these programs. It's a lot of work. And this program is actually giving you a detailed knowledge of autism. And um, you're looking at autism throughout the lifespan. Uh, you're looking at uh, how understanding autism, but also how uh, possible interventions. So, uh, and also if you're doing the MA in autism, you also get the experience of conducting research. So that dissertation module is with you actually conducting hands-on research. The MA in autism, you have um, five modules, uh, five modules that you are taught, plus the extended essay and a, a case study where you are assessing quality of life uh, of an autistic individual, uh, but also your dissertation. So this is this is for the full MA. Now, if you if you wanted to do a diploma, the postgraduate diploma uh, is exactly the same, but without the dissertation. So you wouldn't have that hands on experience of actually conducting and writing up research. And for the postgraduate certificate is the same, but without the case study. So the case study would be missing from that option. So for the full MA, you would get all the taught modules, the extended essay, but the case study as well, where you are assessing quality of life, you're uh, you're looking at possible interventions and and looking at the efficacy of things, plus the dissertation. So uh, that's it for the autism program in a nutshell. Serena, would you like to uh, talk about the forensic program? Yes, yes. So I'll jump in now just to give an overview of the, the forensic program. Um, so this is running for the first time this September and we're really excited about that. We're excited to welcome our first kind of cohort of students. Um, this course is only available 
via distance learning and only available part time. Um, and part of the reason for that is that it's it's an advanced professional development program, really. So so most of the students coming onto this program are likely to be working in relevant settings and, and wanting to kind of develop their knowledge a little bit further. And so distance learning and part time is the most um, appropriate way to do that, I guess. Um, so what we're aiming to do with, with this course is give you a detailed knowledge and understanding of intellectual and developmental disabilities, but also forensic issues. And, and it's quite a unique um, kind of combination of, of factors there. You, you've got the kind of um, factors relating to intellectual and developmental disabilities and the forensic concept, uh, uh, the forensic context, sorry. So we'll cover topics like etiology assessment and treatment of offending behaviour for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, the legal and the policy framework around that context and working with people with IDD in the criminal justice system, and of course, um, elements relating to professional practice and service issues as well that, that feed into all of those um, factors. As with many of our <coughs> other programmes, that, that what we're aiming to do is give you an experience of practice or conducting research in the field. And so there's um, a, a dissertation element for the diploma option. There's a, there's a kind of practice based element as well. So you will need a, a local supervisor. It's a bit different to the analysis and inter, um, intervention in intellectual and developmental disabilities programmes in that we're not arranging a placement or anything for you, but there is an opportunity to do to complete some practice based work in the um, kind of service that you're currently in if you have that the local supervisor so obviously I can talk to you a bit more about that when you when you come through the um, admissions procedure and we we have an interview so I can go through um, the elements around the local supervisor and what that all involves but it gives you an overview really of what of, of the difference with the forensic issues course compared to the other courses it's really that kind of focus on that forensic context Okay, so that's kind of the main element around the um, intellectual and developmental disabilities, autism studies and forensic courses. So there's a bit of detail there if you're interested in, in finding out some more. But as I said, we're going to pause now to take questions related to those courses before we move on to the applied behaviour analysis and positive behaviour support courses. So I'll leave that slide up for a minute just in case you want to copy down any of the information that's there. Um, and I'll just open up the, the chat and we can take any questions. So if you've got any questions, please pop them in the in the chat. I can see there's one there already, Vivi, that would be for you to answer, I think. Yes, I think that I'm um, so I, I don't know, Serena, if you know anything about this, but I don't think that uh, the MA in autism studies would give you any credits uh, for the positive behaviour support certificate that I build. Um, I'm, I'm, so I think, I think I the question think. might be slightly different there, Vivi. So I think that the, the, I think the person is asking, um, they've already done some the PBS Sorry. with build, um, and they're wondering if that can be taken into consideration in the admissions process for the Sorry. MA yeah. in autism. Um, but I think the answer is is kind of the same in that it's um, we, we can certainly look at it and please you know flag it during the, the admissions process, but usually um, it would need to be, you know, accreditation of prior learning comes from kind of prior previous university based learning primarily, um, but definitely flag it and we can we can certainly look into it throughout your your application for that person. Thank you. So will you be able uh, to continue research uh, through the university after graduating? Uh, we do have a lot of students that they have um, carried on and uh, did a PhD with us so they have done uh, but also um, we all, also we have um, a Facebook page aren't we that uh, that uh, people people are all, all part of that and uh, they continue being part of our research but yes there's we're, we're always open for collaborations and we also uh, very often collaborate with organizations and and uh, individuals but also, I'm thinking that uh, we do have quite a few cases, actually, of postgraduate students that so they have uh, then done research with us as research assistants as well. So that's another another route that you would be able to take if you if you really enjoy research. Oh, sorry, that's skipping through the slides. I was trying to scroll through the chat. <laughs> Any other questions about the um, IDD? autism studies or forensic issues courses please just pop them in the chat if so
I'll see anything else that, but uh, I'll I'll be here until the end of the um of the presentation. So if anything else comes to mind, uh, please please do ask. Um, Serena, would you like to uh, continue? It looks like, sorry, I've just noticed it looks like there's something in the Q&A um, option rather than just the chat. And it looks like that is um, a question in particular about the ABA programme. So perhaps I'll come back to that after I've gone through the, the ABA and the PBS programmes, because it might um, it might answer your question anyway. And if not, I can answer it at the end. OK, so I'm going to move on then to our postgraduate study in applied behaviour analysis and positive behaviour support. I'm going to give you a slight caveat at, at the start here in that we are undergoing quite a lot of changes to our courses. So what I'm presenting here is the current course. Um, the changes that we are hoping to implement haven't yet been approved. So we're hoping they're going to be in place for September 2023, but we don't know. So I'm giving you the information on the current course and then I'll give you a bit of an inf information about what we're we're hoping to change and, and what we're planning on changing um, when it gets approved. OK. So the Applied Behaviour Analysis and Positive Behaviour Support programmes, they're, they're very similar in that the taught content is the same. Um, so both programmes provide graduates with detailed knowledge of behaviour analysis, but particularly focusing on behaviour analytic work with individuals who have an intellectual or developmental disability. So we've got that kind of specialist element where we're looking at the use of behaviour analysis um, to support individuals with IDD specifically, rather than behaviour analysis more generally. Um, currently, we don't have a distance learning option or any placements throughout the, the course, um, but again, I'll kind of talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the potential course updates a little bit later on. And as I said, the taught content between the ABA and the PBS programmes is exactly the same. So you will take the same taught modules, depending on whether you're taking the certificate, diploma or masters. But the differentiation in these programmes is made in the large piece of work you do towards the end of your degree, whether that's a dissertation or a work-based learning project. So those who are taking the positive behaviour support course um, generally focus on a positive behaviour support topic for their dissertation on their work-based learning. So that's where the differentiation between those two courses lies. The, the only option, so we have the postgraduate certificate, the postgraduate diploma, um, but they are both in applied behaviour analysis rather than in, in positive behaviour support because the taught content is the same um, across those courses. So we only have the, the ABA postgraduate certificate and diploma. And both of those at the moment are full-time only. But the MSc, if you wanna take the full MSc, you can do that either full-time or part-time. Um, the part-time option is, because, it, because we don't offer distance learning at the moment, the part-time option is not currently available to international students. Um, and part-time students can continue to work part-time. Um, although I would stress that you, you need to um, ensure that you've got the right, the amount of time available within your week to work part time on your studies as well. And this applies across all of the courses at the centre, really. If you're taking a um, postgraduate course part time, you need to expect to spend around 17 to 20 hours a week working on your course. So take that into account if you're working part time in employment as well. Full time students, because this is such an intensive course, you, you cannot work alongside um, students have tried in the past and found it incredibly difficult and generally then either opted to switch to part time on the course or drop their hours at work. So it, re it really is impossible and, and would just be too stressful for you. <laughs> so the the um, courses, as I said, we've got the postgraduate certificate, which is a full time course studied within one year, the postgraduate diploma, also a full time course studied within one year or the MSc, which is full time or part time. And if you're studying part time, you do that over two years. All of those options have five core modules. So you do those five core modules, no matter which kind of course option you take. Then there's two additional modules that you will only take if you're doing the postgraduate diploma or the full masters. And then there's a dissertation of 8,000 words or a work-based learning project of 5,000 words plus a video file that you would only do if you're doing the full masters. Um, at the moment, we also have some different routes through the courses. So at the moment, we have a theoretical or a practice pathway that you can take through those five core modules. Um, and I'll give you a bit of an update about that in a minute, but this is what we currently have. 
So generally, we find that students want to, to gain practical experience and to consolidate their learning. So we have a practice route option for postgraduate certificate students or part time MSc students. The postgraduate diploma students are doing too much taught content to take the practical uh, the practice option and kind of um, work alongside that their study. So it's not really available to the diploma students. So the idea of the practice route is that you're working with an individual with IDD or someone who's autistic, um, or you're working within systems that support people with IDD, such as um, individuals, families, or support staff. Um, and then you're doing some assessment and some support work with that individual or within that service system as part of your, your course, really. As I said before, we don't identify a placement or anything for, for the students that we have on ABA PBS. So it's generally students are completing this in a place where they already work, although that's not always the case. You might find uh, a service that is willing to support you through this kind of practice route um, in addition when you're doing your course. So, but it's the student's responsibility for identifying a, a suitable individual or people and a kind of context to work within for their practice route. And of course, gaining the appropriate consent. Um, for students who can't or don't want to complete a practice route, there is an equivalent theory pathway whereby we'll give you videos and you'll, you'll follow the kind of equivalent pattern of work in terms of doing an assessment and designing a support package. But you're doing that theoretically from video footage rather than in practice with somebody. Um, and then there's a, an option around whether you do a dissertation or work based learning um, for the master students as well. So all master students complete an independent project for full time students. This has to be a non empirical research based dissertation. Again, you would just wouldn't have the time to do an empirical dissertation alongside the full time course because the court, the taught content is so intensive. So we require full time students to do a non empirical dissertation, which tends to be a, a systematic review or something along those lines. If you're studying the master's part time, you can choose to do a dissertation, which could be either empirical or non empirical. And you're working on this across both of the both of the years of your course. Um, if it's empirical, it might be something like designing a, a research study, um, doing some kind of practical assessment or intervention work or interviewing people or something along those lines. If it's non empirical, again, it, it tends to be a systematic review or a policy review or something like that. Part time students, if they don't want to do a dissertation, can opt to do a work based learning project, which is similar to the practice route. And you have to have taken the practice route in year one in order to do the work based learning project. But it's a, it's a more extended case study. Um, so similar kind of work, but more extended for your work based learning project. In, and that falls in year two if you want to take that option. Um, so, as I said, at present, we do not have a distance learning option, although I'll talk about that a bit in a minute. Um, and the course is taught in workshop weeks that are either four to five in, in duration, four to five days in duration, sorry, plus um, possibly some additional sessions, um, one or two additional sessions throughout the year. Attendance at all timetable sessions is compulsory and we're really um, hot on attendance because of our external verification, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. We have to evidence that you have attended the, the, the course. Um, I can give you an indicative timetable for the current version of the course, so you can email um, the TISARD admissions email for that or the LSSJ um, study email for that. There, at the moment, there are 15 workshops overall, so 11 of these are studied by postgraduate certificate, well, studied by all students, but postgraduate certificate students only do those 11, they don't do anything else, and they fall all within year one. If you're doing the um, diploma, Again, all of your um, workshops fall in year one, but it's the full 15 workshops that you would do within one year. Part time master students do 10 workshops in year one and five workshops in year two. Full time masters do all 15 workshops in, in their first year, in their um, year of study. Just a note on um, accreditation or verification. So the postgraduate diploma and the masters incorporate an ABAI verified course sequence for the BACB fifth edition task list. So what that means is that that meets coursework requirements for those seeking certification as a board certified behavior analyst. Um, be aware, of course, that there are other requirements will need to be met in order to apply to sit that exam as well. So there's degree requirements. If you're doing the full master's degree, you would meet that. But if you're only doing the diploma, you would need um, to have a separate postgraduate level degree. Um, and there are also experience requirements around that. 
However, the Behaviour Analyst Certification Board will stop offering certification exams in the UK at the end of 2025. So those who live in the UK and who are seeking certification under the, the Behaviour Analyst Certification Board will need to ensure that they've met all of the requirements and passed their examination by the end of 2025. Um, so that's just to make you aware of, of that kind of international context. However, the, there is a UK system in place, um, an equivalent UK system in place now, and this links to our course updates really. So due to those changes in international certification, the UK Society for Behaviour Analysis have developed a UK equivalent certification system, and you can find information about that directly from the UK Society for Behaviour Analysis. The postgraduate diploma and MSc courses in ABA or PBS in their current format meet the UK SBA requirements, and they will continue to also meet the Applied Behaviour Analysis International requirements um, for the fifth edition task list. However, we're also hoping to make a number of changes to the courses in, in light of that change to international certifications. But I need to really stress these have not yet been approved. So what I'm presenting to you is what we hope um, we can change, but it has not yet been approved. So please don't take this as, um, you know, as, as set in stone yet. So it might not be in place for September 2023 and it, there might be slight changes even to what I'm suggesting we might do here. The main changes that we're looking to make is we're looking to introduce a distance learning option for the courses. We are looking to introduce a UK SBA route through the courses for UK applicants that is mapped on more closely to the UK SBA requirements for certification um, and allows a bit of flexibility as well. And linked to that, there will be changes to the pattern and the content of workshops and the taught modules. So I've just given you an overview of when the different workshops fall and how many workshops there are. But with the, the UK SBA route, that might look a little bit different. And when those workshops fall might look a little bit different if these course, if these changes have been approved as well. However, we are planning to continue providing the ABAI verified course sequence route through the course so that the current course will continue. And um, so everything I've presented so far is still relevant to what we are currently offering. And again, none of this has been approved yet, so it might still change um, and it might not be in place for this September. We're also um, going, to, going to be removing the practice pathway through the taught modules and um, students will continue to be able to do the work based learning as an alternative to a research dissertation. So there's just not that separate practice element in year one for part time master students. If these changes are approved in time for September 2023, I, I as admissions tutor will contact, contact all applicants who are holding offers and we'll discuss the, what the changes are, what they mean and what the different options are and confirm what your, your preferred option is. So what I've presented so far is the, current, is the current course that you're applying for at the moment. If anything changes, I'll contact you effectively. Um, OK, so that kind of brings us to the end of the content about the different courses that this is just slide just reminds you about the overview of the courses we've presented but as I said we're going to go into some Q&A around the ABA and the PBS courses now so I'm just going to have a look at what is sitting in the chat and in the Q&A um, okay so um, so I think I've already answered this question so as an AB MSc of ABA student is it mandatory to do the dissertation or can you choose to do the work-based learning option? So it depends on how you're studying. If you are studying as full-time, you do have to do the dissertation and it has to be a non-empirical dissertation. If you're studying as part-time, you can choose to do a non uh, an empirical dissertation or work-based learning. Um, so hopefully that's clarified that, but let me know if not. Um, uh, just cl a clarification about whether the Masters in ABA programme is sufficient to take the BCBA exam. So if you do the full Masters in Applied Behaviour Analysis, you will meet the coursework requirements and the um, degree requirements to sit your BCBA exam. You will still need to get your supervised experience. Um, and I haven't got time to give you an overview of what that means <laughs> now, but you should be able to get all the information about that from BACB.com. So it, if you take the full masters, you will meet the coursework and the degree requirements. If you just take the postgraduate diploma, you will meet the coursework requirements for the BCBA exam. Um, the 
person who is asking information about um, international requirements, please can you send that over via email because I think it would be easier for us to, to answer that via email as it relates to your kind of unique situation. Um, student asking if research is not your strong suit, what support would students have to succeed? So we provide lots of support and this applies over all of the courses. I think Vivi, you would probably agree here. We provide lots of support for you if you're doing a dissertation because for most students, this will be the first time that they're, that they're doing any, any research. So you have a dedicated supervisor who meets with you. If you're full-time, they meet with you monthly. If they're part-time, they meet with you at least every other month, but sometimes more depending on, on you know, what you need. And they are there to guide you through the whole process effectively. So you're, it's not the case that we kind of give you your project and leave you to go and <laughs> to go and, and do that project and submit something to us you get lots and lots of support you also get some training throughout the course on on research as well in in both uh, you know in, across all the courses really both the variant variants of the courses so there is lots of support there around research also serena there's a question about uh, whether you are assigned a supervisor that you just answered but whether you need subject approval from the dissertation and that would be a yes for, for, for all programs. Yes, you could. Uh, we, we would be putting forward some research ideas, but we're also open to your ideas. And then you can work around that with your dissertation supervisor. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Vivi. Um, so there's a uh, an applicant asking whether they have to declare which stream they want, and if so, when they when they have to do that. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the different kind of options that I've presented and, and possibly also the course changes that I mentioned. So as I said, if it relates to the course changes, they are not approved yet. So that there's nothing for you to for you to do in relation to that. I just wanted to make you aware that there, there might be some changes coming down the line. If those changes are, are approved before September 2023, I will contact everybody to talk to them about that. Um, if it's more around the practice and the theory route and the dissertation versus the work based learning, we wouldn't ask you to confirm that until you're here with us and we'd give you lots more detail to give you um, to, to help you make that decision. So there's nothing for you to do right now other than decide which course you want to apply for and put your application in. Um, and you can always kind of ask us questions throughout the process as well. I'm just going to check the Q&A box as well. Um, so someone in the Q&A is asking, does the ABA programme make you eligible to sit the international BCBA exam? I think I've answered that um, in relation to the, the coursework and the degree requirements. How many people pass? You can find out that information from the BACB, uh, from I think it's Applied Behaviour Analysis International actually that published that now, the, the pass rates for verified course sequences. I'm afraid I don't have that percentage off the top of my head, but it is available online. If you can't find it, pop an email through to us and I can pull out the latest stats for you. Um, and does international mean they can the, the, the individual can work in the US and other countries? So if you take the um, Behaviour Analyst Certification Board route um, and you become certified as a, a board certified behavior analyst that is recognized across lots of different countries. So, yes, you would be able to work in the US and other countries um, following that. OK, I think that's the um, Q&A. So the course starts in uh, September 2023. That's normally the for all of the courses across the centre It's normally the, the third or fourth week in September that, that you will start. So, um, applications are coming in now and we're kind of making offers and then we'll, we'll send for those who hold offers we'll send information over the summer about um you know the course start date and the timetables and all of that kind of stuff okay any other questions obviously, obviously i just wanted to make sure that the understanding is there that um that you the applications have started coming in so so please do apply don't leave it Yes. last minute as um there might be other requirements you might require to do the test or to do the interview and then um or we might require some additional information and that uh, that that really you're under pressure for the time then you've got the you've got the details of the, the email addresses that you can contact us if you've got further questions um and Obviously, you can kind of get in touch with one of us directly as well if you have any other questions. But thank you for coming. And I hope to see lots of applications flying into my inbox. <laughs> Same here. Thank you for listening. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Bye. Bye.